Hey everybody, as you can tell, we're getting ready to have a fish fry. We're fixing to be cooking up that delicious catfish that we caught in Grenada, Mississippi in the last video. But there's some footage that we left out of that video that I think you're gonna wanna see. We actually caught a surprise species and we're gonna be cooking him up as well. So check out this video of landing that fish. We'll talk about it in a minute. And then I'm gonna show you one way that I use to clean those fish. I'll meet you back in the kitchen. And the gar has landed. What you gonna do with that toothy thing? Oh. You pull her? Oh. I love it. Teeth didn't give me, you lying, cut me. Oh, he's done got. We're gonna get the pliers for this one. I'm uh. Slimy, slimy, floppy, floppies. Can result in, well, <laughs> injury sometime. I don't know if I've done that or not. It looks like an old one. Tell you what. I hate to miss an opportunity out of about go put him in the cooler and go on and get some ice. Head on out. Let's do it. You got some gloves up there. Pen got me that time. came through with some old content here. Who's ready for a gar? Catch, clean, and cook. Old boy's got a, he's got a damaged beak on him. And I'm not a fan of just throwing fish out on the bank. There's too many bones and stuff out there now, folks doing that mess. It ain't for me. And if you did see that last video where we fished in Grenada, well, you already know the bait that Pop caught him on. Now we've been fighting these gar all that day and I had so many miss hookups and so many, you know, getting them to the bank but couldn't quite get them on the shore. He goes out there with his bait, brings one in, but now that he's in the cooler, let me show you how we're gonna clean him and then I'll meet you in the kitchen. And now we're back and we are going to try to get this guy cleaned up. So if you hadn't watched that video again, try to do that. So we were not expecting to bring home a long nose gar. Um, we had no ice in the cooler or anything, and as I stated in that full video, you definitely want to make sure that you get these things either dressed or chilled down as quick as you can. So we actually left fishing for the day to go grab a couple bags of ice and get him in this cooler um, on the ice because what will happen, and there's a name for it, I don't know what it is, but the meat on these fish will actually start to deteriorate and it gets really mushy and soft. Now whether that affects the meat or not as far as eating it, I don't know, but as you're cleaning it, it's definitely not appetizing, so you don't want to do it. But um, since we were not in, intending to catch and keep or clean a garfish, um, we didn't necessarily have the correct tools uh, in mind to uh, get his armor plating off. So he's got a really thick skin with scales on it. You know, a knife's just not going to do it. There are methods where you can come up behind the uh, dorsal fin here and actually hack your way up the skin, which will expose you know, a strip of meat on top, and then you can cut down the sides to expose the fillets inside that you're gonna get out. But basically, um, at no time in this should we even enter into the gut cavity while we clean him. Um, we'll attempt to cut straight up his armor plating on the back or straight up his tough skin, and then we will use our fillet knife then to shave the skin or basically peel it off the sides of the fish. And then on each side, there is a long um, fillet that is really good to eat. Now, a lot of people say, well, Gar, they're poisonous. Well. From my understanding, the poisonous part would be the row if this fish had eggs inside the gut cavity. And again, we don't plan to get there. So um, if for some chance that was to come in contact with a meat, we would discard that meat, obviously not eat it. Um, I will say this joker is slimy. Um, so we've been paper toweling him to death trying to get the slime off just so we can even handle the fish. But to get us started here, I will attempt um, to get an incision made and this dorsal fin looks like a prime spot to try to get started on So I'm just gonna come in here on the bottom side and try to get plenty 
plenty of that uh, plating under it instead of just cutting it off. If we go into the meat, it's probably okay. All right, so you can see here, I've actually got through the plating. That's one thing we wanna do. So now, if we can, get my paper towel out of the way here. Um, we're gonna try to start these scissors up into that plate and work our way down the fish. And we'll see how well that works. So I may just go ahead and take that off. So again, I usually do this with like shears or tin snips. I've seen some people do it with a cutoff wheel on a, a Dremel tool or an angle grinder. Uh, just cut their way down the back. Um, I can't say what that actually does for the meat inside, but we're gonna try to get these scissors in here without sending them through my hand and see if we can get it cut. And right now, it will be slow go, but it looks like we might do the trick. So what I'm gonna try to do, I know that that meat is rolling off the side of the fish. So I'm actually gonna try to just get on one side of it, maybe even use my fillet knife to get started here and work down the inside of that meat if I can. And you see my knife starting to go in, I'm just carving down the inside of the skin and give my scissors enough room to get in. If we can get him cut open here, that's what we're gonna try to do. So making progress, we wanna go up to his head now, as difficult as it is to try to get this cut up, the fish is not that hard once you get that incision made to finish cleaning. All right, maybe on a roll now. If you checked out that clip I just posted on there of landing the fish, you also saw um, that I had a bloody spot on my finger when we got done. Either his pectoral fin or a tooth actually got me there. And uh, a lot of you, um, a lot of you judge or laugh because I actually went and got pliers to get that hook out. I actually had a hardhead catfish on the coast impale my finger going in here and out here the other day. So I'm a little leery. So what we're gonna do the best we can, I'm gonna see if I can get this fish butterfly open. I'll show you on one side and then we'll come back with our camera if possible and get the meat off of this. But here you can see one side we're getting, just working that fillet knife down that skin. There's not really a good way to hold him. But now that we're through there, we're just gonna peel that open. If you can zoom in or move closer on that, you can just see how that knife is following that skin right down the edge. And I'm just going right up to his head here. And again, we're not wanting to penetrate the gut cavity. All right, we're gonna get the other side butterfly open for you to see. We'll show you how to get a fillet off and you can meet us back in the kitchen. All right, so as you can see, we got that other side done. Went ahead and took our shears and cut around the head here to kind of lay this uh, thick skin off. And we did the same thing on the back. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna find, he's got a, a backbone here, so I'm gonna come in at an angle with the tip of my knife and you can hear it clicking down that backbone. That's how we're gonna find it and work this down for this fillet here on the side. And if you'll notice the fillets on these fish are basically the entire length of the fish. So, you guys have been, if you're throwing these things back or if you're throwing them out on the bank when you catch them because they're a nuisance, you're, you're losing a lot of decent meat that you could have. And we're going to do a taste test with this later and see just how decent is it, if anyone enjoys it or not. So once you get down a little ways into it, you actually feel the ribs. So the ribs are going to kind of roll over to his belly. So what I'm doing is following the backbone here, but now... I'm hitting that rib cage and I'm letting my knife just tick along the edge of those ribs. And right there I came through. So we're off the edge of the ribs now. Take my knife, come back up here. I can get out from under the ribs. Come out from under here, straight up on top of the head. And we're just gonna keep going just like this. And that is one gar fillet. And we'll get that cleaned up, slice it into small hunks and cook it later. 
So you can see here we've got our fish that we caught the other day. The only thing that's been done with these fish is we put them in the stainless bowl, uh, fill the bowl full of fresh water, put them in the refrigerator. They've been in the refrigerator about 24 hours or so. All we did was change the water on them periodically. Uh, we didn't add any salt in, we didn't add in anything else, uh, no lemon juice, anything like that. But this is that nice long gar filet, and I didn't, I didn't realize that when I was talking about it being red. So it is going to be a, a slightly different color than these channel catfish we caught. So got a nice channel cat filet here. And what we want to do, we want to get all this dried off good. Um, so we're going to dry it down. We'll also, we'll come back through off camera, we'll trim it a little bit if it had any skin left on it. We just rinsed it thoroughly and put it in some water overnight in the fridge, keep it cool until we were ready to do our, uh, our fish fry, which is happening today. As you can tell, we're already getting the oil hot, warmed up. So we're gonna take this paper towel here on top, get that padded nice and dry. May have to take several changes of paper towels, but I'm just gonna roll these around a little bit, try to get most of the uh, moisture off of them if we can. Pat them dry, and that's good enough. We're good to go with what we're gonna do today with those fish. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do before we start breading our fish, we're gonna take our gar fillets here. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it in the video um, the other day or not, but, or mentioned in the video last time, but gar has a tendency, in my opinion, to be slightly tough. So what we're gonna do is something I think is pretty common for people who actually cook and eat gar. We're gonna make nuggets. Um, I think commonly referred to as gar balls, but uh, we'll call them nuggets on here. So we've got our gar nuggets going. And we're just gonna cut those up into maybe, I don't know, one inch cubes. And that way when we bread them and fry them, it's gonna be more of like a bite-sized piece Gonna get the whole thing in your mouth you're not going to be stuck trying to bite off a larger piece where you know you run the risk of it being chewy and tearing and if you're eating a, a po boy or a sandwich you know you're going to wind up making a mess of your sandwich trying to chew it off but we're just going to get all that cut up and we'll be ready to get it in our fish fry all right so now we're ready for our fish fry batter that we're going to put on we're out of town, we're keeping it real simple. Went to the local grocery store, got some Zatarans, crispy southern fish fry. And all I like to do when I do this, take you a gallon Ziploc bag, and go ahead and get that opened up. We'll open up our fish fry. Just go ahead and take that, take that out. We don't need the box. And we'll get this opened up good. Now, I don't wanna just overfill the bag or overstuff the bag. Um, as a matter of fact, I'd like to be able to open the bag. Uh, we'll get that opened up a little bit. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna add, I don't know, maybe half of this to our Ziploc bag that we've got going on here. And take it, I don't know, about like that'll get us a good start. And we're gonna go ahead and start with the catfish. So we're just gonna drop in a few at a time. You don't wanna overcrowd the pool too much. Uh, get the pieces in there, that way they can all get coated. So we're gonna do, I don't know, a little less than half of what we've got. Get a little of the air out. Take that now, and we just want to work that around, coating those fish up good. And what we're going to do, we're going to take them out then, set them aside, and uh, let that batter, or let the moisture that's left in the fish kind of um, absorb that batter. It'll get a little uh, get a little mushy, I guess, the batter will, as the batter gets the moisture off the fish. Uh, and then we're going to rebread them before we drop them in the oil. All right, that'll help that extra layer of bread and stick, give you a finer crunch on the fish. Make sure everything's coated good, and we'll move on to finishing up all of this. All right, and we are just finishing up our gar nuggets now. Getting them nice and coated, all edges. And we're gonna save this bag of batter when we're done, or this bag of breading, because again, we are gonna redo this before the fish go in the oil. And You'll notice here, we're putting them in just a disposable pan. Keep life simple, throw it away when you get done. We're just putting them in a disposable pan here. And I've just got a paper towel layer between our fish. Um, that's just to help keep, as that moisture in the fish gets into those breadcrumbs, um, it just helps keep the fish from sticking together. Um, again, it, it might get a little mushy 
Um, you can see this piece of gar uh, here, if it'll show up. You know, that bread is going to start getting wet on the outside. And if you got your fish all stacked in on top of each other, um, it just makes them a little more messy later. So it helps to keep them kind of individualized, keep a layer between them, keep them separated. But uh, we'll see you again with the hot grease and we'll be ready to fry some fish. Hey, so I want to know how many of you out there are like me. If you're the one doing the cooking on the fish and you start getting it piling up like this in the pan and it looks delicious and you can't help yourself but snap, how many of you are like me and will eat as much while you're cooking so that when it's actually time to eat with everybody else, you're full. Yeah, those are good. Those are done. I'll go ahead and pull them. Plate these up. Start getting cool off good. And there you have it. Gar nuggets. Our first victim for a really hot taste test right now. He just figured out it's really hot. First impressions. One to 10. 10 is, is the best thing you ever had and one's terrible. The thumbs up and the facial expression gave two different opinions. It was hot. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a number. Give me a number. Nine and a half. Oh my goodness. On long nose gar. Taste test number one. We're gonna go get these on the table. Check back with you when I got my plate fixed, ready to eat. And it don't get much better than that for a good down home Saturday Southern meal. We got all the fried. We got the sweet tea to wash it down with. We've got our fried long nose gar nuggets. If you're watching our gar video, and we're gonna do a taste test comparison to some uh, some channel cat. No, that's a that's a thick uh, channel cat fillet. That was a big fish when we caught that one. Um, but we're gonna do because everybody knows what catfish tastes like. We're gonna do the gar first, and this is just first impression, first reaction, facial, whatever. Um, and then uh, we'll do a comparison with the catfish after that. So. It's good. Um, right off the bat, the texture to me is a lot like chicken. A little bit chewier. Um, kind of that stringy, you know, when you're when you're trying to pull chicken apart or something. Uh, reminds me a lot of that, but definitely got the fish flavor. Um, and, and the batter certainly helps with that, the fish fry. But uh, overall, excellent. It's a shame if you watch our video, we're actually at Grenada Lake Spillway where this fish was caught. It's a shame all of these fish that are thrown out on the bank. I understand they're nuisance species and just like for us, you know, we were down there trying to catch catfish and unfortunately, Gar kept stealing our bait and all that and it gets very frustrating. But, you know, when, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade, right? And this is some good taste in lemonade with this Gar. So. 
It's chewy. Oh, that, that's the only thing about it. Flavor's there. Flavor's great, but it's chewy. It's not, it's not that light, fluffy, flaky that we think of with good fish. Um, but it is a very different, very different good. Uh, all right, so now, channel cap. Show you the big piece. Just tore a little one off here. What can I say? It's melting in your mouth. I mean, you don't get the chewy. It, it just falls apart. Um... A little watery seems like I don't know that could have been something with the with the soak that I did on them or the cooking method um, but great flavor on both of them so definitely consider putting uh, putting gar in your uh, in your recipe arsenal um, it is a, a definitely doable fish um, if you watch the video yes it takes a little work to get that that uh, skin off and those scales off but man once they're off gar can be really good food hey everyone thanks for watching we hope you enjoyed this video if you liked it and want to see more please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel we'll catch you on the next cast right here on the j-line